Hello and welcome to Witch Please, a fortnightly podcast about the Harry Potter world. I'm Marcel Cosman. And I'm Anna McGregor. And Marcel, we are about to record our last ever episode of Witch Please. And I want to talk about how we feel about it in the sorting chat. Oh, dearly beloved, <laughs> we are gathered here today. To Listen, say goodbye. It's not a funeral. It's a celebration of life. Mm, feels so good. Yeah. Marcel, do you want to maybe set the scene for our beloved listeners and tell them where we are recording right now? Maybe to help them understand why they're going to hear the sort of urban grind of the city in the background. <laughs> yes. Yes. We here at Which Please have decided to get real about podcasting. So we are in New York, in Brooklyn specifically in Coach's Airbnb, joined by our uh, beloved digital, digital projects, projects coordinator. coordinator, Gabby Iori. And while Zoe Mix is not here with us in the flesh, she is here with us in what is a non-creepy way to say spirit? Ooh. Uh, yeah, yeah. Zoe's going to join us soon. We're all moving yeah. to New York. That's, that's a lie. That's a lie. But we, we are, are doing in it. New York because yeah. we just finished camp. Camp! Yeah, it was it was good. How are you feeling? Did you have fun at camp? I had one of the one of, if not the best weekend of my entire life. It was incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's important for listeners to know that um, we had not ever met in person before. I'm, I mean, me and Marcel. <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> it's, been, it's very, it's very weird. Uh, you know, I've I've touched Marcel so many times. <laughs> <laughs> gentle one finger touch only people. Don't oh be God, creepy. Gentle one finger touch. That's an inside joke. If you, if you uh, give us money on Patreon, we'll explain it to you. So anyway. we are we have finally got to meet Coach and Gabby in real life. And if we seem a little silly this episode, it's because we are high on friendship. I think. High on yeah. friendship. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, a little louder for the people in the back. Please Please go. Go. <laughs> yeah. We did a lot of screaming at camp, yeah, it was shockingly. Scre- screaming Not intensive. because it was a horror movie, actually, but yeah. because it was just enjoyable. Yeah, and despite the fact that we've already lost our voices, we are going to do more screaming today because we are screaming with thrills about Material, material Girls. girls. Well, wow, there's no lag because we're not on Zoom. That's weird. <laughs> pretty exciting. Actually, pretty exciting. Yeah, I'm really excited. Marcel, are you excited about Material Girls? I'm incredibly excited. And I think that like so much of the grief and sorrow that I would be feeling about the completion of Witch Please is overcome by the excitement that I have for the new project that we're working on because the team is coming with us, yeah. right? Agreed. I am more excited about Material Girls than I am like nostalgic for finishing which please because it doesn't feel like oh a thing is coming to an end it feels like hey we and by coach i mean have come up with a great new idea and <laughs> kind of because it was coach's idea that means i think that they can never leave us now so little latch key, the sound of a latch key lock <laughs> Oh no, is she going to, why is it filling with gas in here? What's happening? <laughs> Having already recorded two episodes of Material Girls, I can say we've had a blast. It's so much more fun than talking about a book that has started to break our hearts. <laughs> But you know what's not sad, Marcel? What? what? What's not sad? The incredibly exciting episode that we have planned for today. Oh, it's going to be so silly. Yeah. I can't wait. Should we start? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. <laughs> because this is our grand finale, or as they say in the UK, grand final. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm not. <laughs> it's the funniest thing about that country. But because this is our grand finale, we're going to do something completely different than any other episode. Oh, 
Ooh, good. Start yeah. something new. Yeah, we love to start something new right at the end. So this episode is going to be all games. Oh, fuck. Yes, we love a game. Yeah. Marcel. Yeah. I'm going to start us off okay. with a game I have invented called Reading Roulette. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay, so here is how it works. And <laughs> listeners, you can play along at home. Ooh. I have a spreadsheet that contains two columns. <laughs> Oh my god, everybody, calm down. Two columns? <laughs> Whoa. Ladies, she can do statistics and she can do Excel. <laughs> Woo! I am a woman in STEM. Thank you. I have an Excel spreadsheet in front of me. You might say that she excels at... I wouldn't. I'm not a woman in puns. She excels at Google Sheets. It's a Google Sheet. I was lying. It's a Google Sheet. <laughs> I do excel at Google Sheets. <laughs> Great point. <laughs> so here is how it is going to work. Okay. You are going to roll this here 20 sided die. This is how I roll. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Twice. Okay. So roll it once now. 10. Okay. So you are going to be offering a critical reading of Quidditch. <laughs> and now roll again to find out what uh, theoretical method you're going to use. Oh my god, this is the worst thing you've ever done to me. Yeah, I know. I'm so excited. Seven. Great. Through no, no, it's a one. Yeah, no, it's a, I knew it was one. You will be doing a critical reading of Quidditch through the lens of Orientalism. Enjoy! Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> if this wasn't such a good bit, I would be so fucking mad at you. You are so lucky. This is so good. Okay. So Edward Said's theory of how the West objectifies the so-called imagined East by treating the history of all Eastern culture as ancient and beautiful, but long since past. Mm -hmm. no longer mm -hmm. relevant, more artistic and beautiful, but gone. And, uh, you know, among many other things. Yeah, like sort of ideologically constructs the East as the opposite of how the West wants to construct itself. So if the West <laughs> is civilized, the East is uncivilized. If the West is rational, the East is irrational. This is a pedagogical move where when one of your students starts talking hot nonsense, you say yes and then say what they should have said. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. You re-summarize their point, but with the thing you wish they'd said. <laughs> Pedagogy. <laughs> I recognize it because I do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It works great. It does. It it does. Really does. And then they're like, yes, that's right. That was what I was trying to and say. And you're like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Let's don't. all pretend that's true. <laughs> Anywho, so, yes. Okay. So, we can see the Orientalist turn in Quidditch vis a vis the snitch. Ooh, tell me more. The idea of a shiny, golden anthropomorphized trinket that is somehow magic and that mm. one must capture mm. and that capturing it represents the the claiming of mm. the of, of the entirety of the activity which would be winning the game <laughs> yes absolutely absolutely whoever sort of appropriates the colonial good first wins what a bitch <laughs> I don't know. This is, you're right. You're There's right. a whoop, 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 whoop. That's the sound of the police. <laughs> the police are coming <laughs> to arrest you for your terrible reading. I actually do love this reading. I, particularly you. because <laughs> the of this, the absolutely absurd thing where once you catch the snitch, you, w you win the game and everything that happened previously. It doesn't relevant. matter. So you don't technically win the game, right? Because you just get 150 points, but the game ends. So presumably yeah. you will win the game. Yeah. Presumably. Yeah. Unless but... you are 150 points behind. Yeah. 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 Kind of like Bulgaria against Ireland. Am I right? Woo! 
I don't know what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, okay. that was good. That was good. I got the thumbs up from Coach. It was a good joke. Okay. She's also oh. telling us to move it along. Okay. So she's saying Hannah, that we should move it along Hannah, to play I'm in another round you. of this excellent game. I'm gonna need you to stop interrupting. No, I'm just joking. Okay, I actually just <laughs> think <laughs> we should do it again. So roll, roll that die. <laughs> Seven. Incredible goblins. Oh yes. <laughs> 20. Mmm, eugenics. Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry, the one time in my life that I have said, mmm, <laughs> eugenics. If you could not clip that out, that would be really great for me. <laughs> All right. The representation mm -hmm. of the goblins as a race of creature that is humanoid, but not human, mm. is an example of eugenics at work because it is a means of categorizing some humans as humans and some humans as more like an animal than humans. And goblins are treated as a subset of humanoid, human-ish creature in that they are allowed to participate in wizarding world life, but only in very limited and restricted ways. Their access to magic is controlled and limited by the wizards because they are not trusted. And they uh, also are expected to run the banks because they're Jews. Hashtag I mean, eugenics. Not even funny. Just a good reading. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just really good. Just really good. Just one more. Ooh, ooh, Let's just do one more. I know. Oh no, she had a she had a she had a, a mediocre one, and then she had a good one, and now and now we're gonna watch her uh, knock it out of the park. <laughs> oh, no. Six. The Tri Wizard Tournament. Five. Animal studies. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the fun thing, which people will see when I share the spreadsheet one day, is that the numbers match. So, like, five is Hedwig and animal studies. Oh, no. Six is the Triwizard Tournament and structuralism. So the possibility. There is a possibility that you get the thing that is just, like, yes. a reading handed yeah, to you. But, uh, but st it's a, it's statistically, a statistically unlikely. <laughs> Oh no, I'm too cool. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so the Tri Wizard Tournament and Animal Studies. All right, the Tri Wizard. No, I got this. Oh mm, yes. Mm, okay. Mm, mm, mm. Each task in the Tri Wizard Tournament makes use of creatures that are either dehumanized or are considered animals in such a way that our hero needs to defeat them in order to succeed and also thereby prove the superiority of humans over animals and also reaffirm the separation of humans over animals. Oh, yeah. So, it's like a ritual yeah. of reinforcement yes. that... Re like ceremonially mm -hmm. reinstates the supremacy of wizards mm -hmm. over a variety of creatures, some yeah. of whom are like pretty, pretty human, pretty human. <laughs> yeah, mer people, pretty human. They just yeah. live underwater. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we know it's mm -hmm. actually better down where it's wetter. Mm. <laughs> That's what she said. Am I right, Lee? Down where it's winter, take it from me. Did such a good job at this really mean game. I was honestly, it's a really good thing you rescued me in in Orientalism because I was I was really I was really grasping at straws there. Thank you, oh, thank you, I appreciate God. it. Is there anything I love more than watching you have a panicked giggle meltdown? <laughs> Maybe not. That might be the purest pleasure I can experience. I'll, I'll give the people what they want, yeah. is what I say. And I'm the people. You are the people. Mm -hmm. Hannah, I would not only die for you, I would kill for you. 
I mean, can, would and have. Would and have. <laughs> and will again. Marcel, do you have a game for me? Okay, so what I have brought with me is two truths and a lie. And mm. I have two categories. Category one is two, two truths and a lie devastating fun facts, <laughs> where you have to guess if it was a devastating fun fact or if it is a new devastating fun fact. <laughs> I guess you mean use my human memory. Use <laughs> your human memory. Okay. Uh, and then category two is the witch please team. I want to start with devastating fun facts so that I have time to get over crying. <laughs> okay, good and right. That's good. Good. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> Bad news first. That's what I always say. Bad news first. That's the way to go. All right. So devastating fun fact. Sirius always wanted to adopt a cat, but he never got the chance before he died. All right. Okay. Is that, do Actually, I say, do I say, do I just say? Oh, sorry. No, you're Is right. it two truths and a no, lie or is it just true or false? It's just true or false. No, it's just, <laughs> I'm sorry, I have two more. I should clarify the sort of structure of the game. <laughs> Listen, I've never played this game sober. I forgot how it works. Uh, and also you probably will find out why I'm like this in the devastating fun facts, which please edition. Sorry, I didn't realize that the second part of Two Truths and a Lie was devastating fun facts, which plays addition. It's just devastating things about our actual lives. This is fun real, facts. This is Hannah real. tragically lost her mother at the age of 16. Fuck. True. Read more about it. Just my, you just have the AC because I'm sweating. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, that was what they call in the biz a Freudian slip. Okay. <clears throat> Sirius always wanted to adopt a cat, but he never got the chance before he died. One of the nicknames Sirius enjoyed in his dog form was King Arthur. And Sirius's favorite flower is the forget me not. <laughs> Which one? Which one is which one is the lie? I feel like I would remember King Arthur, so I'm gonna say that's the one. That's the lie. That was incorrect. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's the forget me not then, the because the cat one I definitely remember is real yeah. because of his beautiful bond with Kirkshanks. Exactly. <laughs> I can't believe. Seriously, I can't flower is be- the forget me not. I can't believe I forgot King <laughs> Arthur. <laughs> I'm going to memento style get that tattooed on me so I never forget again. Winky worked for the Weasley family after the Battle of Hogwarts. The Dobby Act of 1999 introduced house elf rights legislation in the wizarding world. Fun fact... Creature always knew that Harry was still alive because he remained enslaved. I can see that's the beauty of recording in person. You can see the devastation that you're causing. Sort of up close and personal. <laughs> that's so sad. I think the first one is is a lie wow i'm bad i am bad at this i think i think you know that thing where you experience a trauma and then you can't remember it afterwards that's, what I do to you I think that's what's that. happened with devastating fun facts it's the third one. creature always knew that harry was still alive because he remained in speed fun fact the reason the Deluminator looks like a lighter is because Dumbledore used to smoke. Dumbledore never learned how to juggle. Dumbledore pays for Filch's quick spell course because he doesn't want the poor man to get swindled by the charlatans who run the quick spell company. I usually just have to say here and be sad for a minute. <laughs> <sighs> what was the second one again? Dumbledore never learned how to juggle. That one, that's fake. That is correct. Oh, thank God. <laughs> It's real that he paid for filches. No, it's just a real devastating fun fact that I invented. Yeah. 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 Do horrible woman. <laughs> New sound oh, sorry. Like, horrible woman. <laughs> horrible woman. You want filch to pay for his own? <laughs> it's so sad. It's just so sad. 
Okay, this is, this is the last devastating fun facts version, then the next will be devastating super fun facts about the police team. I'm just... <laughs> okay, Neville, like, legit could not have done it in four books because he did not have the confidence until he joined the DA. You know, the, like, the people say, like, Neville could have done it in four. Yeah. yeah. So he legit couldn't have because he didn't have the confidence until he joined the DA. Yeah. Neville becomes the most beloved Hogwarts headmaster in over a century. And uh, last one, Alice Longbottom uses gum as a kind of plasticine to sculpt things that Neville describes to her. The first one. That is correct. I'll remember the chewing gum plasticine one forever. Forever. Yeah. <laughs> that crushed me. I'm yeah. Especially, like, especially yeah. bad one. <laughs> yeah. Crushed me. Yeah. Crushed me. Yeah. I'm sorry, Gabby. <laughs> I don't know why I'm like this. I think you are. I'm not. I don't, I'm you're not. You're having so much fun. <laughs> you watch us cry and you laugh and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we move on to category two, okay. which is about the Witch Please, Witch Please team. team. Did you reach out to the Witch Please team okay. for facts about them? Yeah, I did. I got a thumbs up from Gabby. Wow. Wow. Scheming behind my back. Anyway, okay, so we'll start with me because you know me the best. So probably people last one. Marcel. That's me. <laughs> Marcel's middle name is Star. She was named after a mime because her father wanted her to be quiet. And her favorite color is pink. I don't think your middle name is Star. Is it? We have been <laughs> so Is it? God your God middle God. name is when Star? We your middle friends. name is Star. I was at your wedding. You were at my wedding. Nobody called you Marcel Star Cosman. Well, no, it wasn't in a church. <laughs> <laughs> were, this what? is changing everything. I actually am not sure if we can keep being friends. <laughs> What's your favorite color? It's blue. Oh, that's cute. I know. That's I know. Cute. You would never know. Everything, because I just fucking everything about so much, you is but... cute. But obviously, I know the fact that your father named you Marcel because he hoped you would be quiet. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah. Another, another <laughs> surprise. They're not in touch. <laughs> Can't imagine why. Was it before or after he told her that as an adult? <laughs> and then told her clearly it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next we have Coach. Coach, Coach's favorite day of the week is Friday. Coach, I'm going to need you to look away during this because okay. Anna's going to try to reach your face. Okay, okay. she'll be able to. Okay. Okay. Co and yeah, she's, she's a very good actor. <laughs> Coach's favorite day of the week is Friday. Coach has a little boy living inside her named Ben. <laughs> Sorry, <I can't> even... <laughs> she has a little boy living inside of her named Ben. Ben's favorite day of the week is Thursday. <laughs> And the only sports team she cares about is her Chicago volleyball team. The first one is a lie. That is correct. Can you guess what Coach's favorite day of the week is? Thursday. Favorite <laughs> same as Ben. <laughs> That's the one main thing Coach and Ben have in common. Ben, Very well done. For the people, Ben is a character Coach devised uh, at camp. Me, he's a little boy. He's, he's a little boy who lives inside of Coach. Of um... And I think maybe if we reach seven thousand dollars a month on Patreon, we might, you might get to meet Ben. I would love, I would love that. I'd actually really love for you all to meet Ben. I think that would be really yeah. good. Yeah, you want yeah. devastating fun facts to continue? I think you need to meet Ben. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hashtag release the Ben cut for ben, sure. Ben is the embodiment of devastating fun facts. Yeah, sorry. The oh, premise. sorry. Ben's whole thing. Yeah, Ben's, Ben's whole thing. Is that his favorite is Thursday and he, he always wants to know if it's Thursday and it never is. It is never Thursday. <laughs> All right, great. Okay, now we move on to a Gabby. <clears throat> Gabby's favorite color is purple. Yesterday, Gabby misused the term echo chamber and was teased by her very dear friends, Coach and AJ. And Gabby's favorite chip flavor of choice is barbecue. I think the first one's a lie. Is it the barbecue one? It's obviously not the echo chamber one. <laughs> <laughs> she would obviously not know what an echo chamber is. It definitely I mean, you definitely, you have the look of somebody who doesn't know how to use echo chamber in a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing to say for right <laughs> I am surprised your favorite color is purple because I have never seen you wear it. I don't really wear a lot of color. What 
That's fucking actually... color are those bright mustard yellow pants you're wearing? But mustard is basically a neutral. They are also coaches' pants. Oh, that's a very oh bad. God, is that why they're so rolled up? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> is that why Coach is not wearing pants? Did you, are you wearing Coach's only pair of pants right now? Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. Cool, cool. Okay. So your favorite color is purple. I, you know what, I'm relieved because barbecue chips are kind of gross. <laughs> I mean, I ate 17 bags of them at camp, obviously. <laughs> all right, okay, okay. Next. No, 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 no. What's your favorite flavor of chips? Oh, sorry. Salt and vinegar. Okay, yeah, okay, all right, yeah, yeah. Makes okay. Yeah. Okay. Now Zoe. 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 Zoe never naps. Zoe was a furry in high school and even attended a furry convention in Seattle with her best friend. She made her mom take her. Uh, and Zoe hates waffle cones. I think the third one's a lie. That is correct. Yeah. That is correct. <laughs> Zoe's favorite dessert. In fact, is a scoop of chocolate ice cream in a waffle cone. I thought you were going to say a waffle cone and I was going to feel really sad. <laughs> just a so plain... It deserves just, so much better than just a dry a, waffle cone. A plain dry waffle cone. <laughs> there is this... There's an ice cream place in Vancouver. Vancouver is a real, like, many artisanal ice cream shops kind of town. <laughs> um, like, seasonal flavors mm-hmm. with local produce. Mm-hmm. And the one I prefer has OK cones... The one that has the less good vegan ice cream flavors Mm -hmm. makes their own waffle cones Mm in-house. And when you go in, it smells like fresh waffle cones. So do you sometimes go and buy an ice cream? They're simply not close enough together. And then dump that garbage ice cream on the ground and walk with your nice warm waffle cone to the good one. They're just not, they're not close enough together. But I do like the way you assumed that I would just, 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 just like yeah, shit. fuck that. <laughs> okay, we do we do have a bonus. Oh my god, is it is it about me? No, no, <laughs> no. It's AJ. I didn't know how to get in touch with oh Eric, gosh. but I do know how to get in touch with AJ. Oh my god, that's cute. I so I have I that's have cute. Some... <laughs> Eric, right, right in. <laughs> Hey, Eric, when you're listening to this, just let us know some devastating fun facts about your life. If you could. Okay. All right. I can't wait to get this round. Okay. So, AJ, perhaps you know the least next to me. (laughs) All right. Except you. No, I got Gabby wrong, too. Oh, that's true. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Gabby's an enigma. AJ's favorite movie genre is superhero movies. AJ's favorite season is spring. And one time, AJ accidentally screen shared at a work training thing while his post breakup notes app was still up. <gasps> okay, it's gotta be the Marvel superheroes one is the lie. <laughs> yes. There's no way that artsy motherfucker <laughs> likes superhero movies. <laughs> no, his favorite genre is thrillers. Really? That's all. Oh, that's still more exciting than I would have thought. I would have thought sort of like, like French art house. Sorry, AJ. <laughs> you heard that hand. It's your kind of basic. <laughs> French, <laughs> French art. How is French art? No, no. Oh no. no! I thought you were cooler than you are. That's yeah. yeah that's Sorry. sort of the. Sorry, AJ. Yeah. You had a thought that you were cool. I thought you were cool. You're kind of basic. Yeah. yeah. Thrillers. Anyway. Those are movies for the people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. And that's uh, and that's it. That's oh. it. We. You did it, Anna. You did it. You. You. Wow. You. You passed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what? I got three out of five, and that is, as everybody knows, I don't need to explain to you, but sixty percent. Yeah, that was incredible. And Hannah really demonstrated that she knows uh, everybody except for Gabby and me. <laughs> Uh, but that's okay. That's okay. I feel safe. Star? At that. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I've got both my passport and my driver's license in my fanny pack, and I'll show them both to you right after this. <laughs> As okay. it turns out, that's the most devastating fun fact of the day. That my middle name is Star? But that she didn't know that's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Like a really big... What are my middle names? Oh, no. I just realized what I did there by accident. <laughs> Sorry, coach. I got it. I got you. <laughs> Hannah Catherine Penner. 
McGregor. Okay, so we're even. What is it? <laughs> you know, it is Katrina. Okay, it's close. It's didn't close. Know. It's close. Didn't know. How could I have known? Yeah, there's no way. There's simply no way to have known. No way to have Did you know? But no? Penner. I did get Penner. You got Penner right. I did get yeah. Penner. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Great. Absolutely. Great, Great job. Okay. Great job. So, Mar okay. it is in fact the first time Marcel and I have met. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, with that, I say we uh, we move on. Just move right along. Let's just, just pretend this on. never happened. Yeah, but In a shockingly earnest turn, we wanted to end this episode with some messages and reflections from you, our listeners. This reboot could not have been possible without you. Thank you so much for listening to the show, for holding us accountable, for pitching us episode ideas that we never could have thought of without your help, for sharing the show with your friends, and for making us feel so loved along the way. Yeah, it's literally not a podcast if nobody listens to it. It's just a bummer. <laughs> it's just a sad story about two friends who don't even know each other's middle names. <laughs> so with that, we hand the mic over to you. Hi, this is Danielle O'Banion. I am located in East Hampton, Massachusetts. Dearest Witch Please team, it is hard to come up with words to honor the most important parasocial relationship of my life. All of you have breathed life and wit into concepts that were originally taught to me in the dusty old white guy frame that we all love to hate. In teaching me, you have made me a better reader and a better person. Books may not be a personality, but good reading can rebuild our minds. And for your gift, I am forever grateful. Best of luck with Material Girls. Y'all are awesome. Hi, this is Emma, and I'm recording from Boylston, Massachusetts. I found Witch Please a long time ago, and it makes me feel um, smarter and more connected and reminds me that there are intelligent people having the conversations that need to be had in order for this world to be a better place. So thank you so much, Marcel and Hannah. I seriously... Love you guys, and I click on their link to listen to the pod as soon as it comes out, because it just makes my week. Thank you. Hi, Hannah and Marcel. My name's Jess, pronouns she, they, and I'm calling from London, uh, UK, not Ontario. I've been listening to the podcast for a lot of years, so every time I start an episode, I feel like I have two awesome scholarly friends in my ears. You've made me a better reader, generally, but also than Rowling, and a better critical thinker. And a person who sings sexy anytime someone says the word. Listening to Witch Please is like returning to those exciting, nostalgic summers long ago when I'd read each new book cover to cover and barely sleep until I'd finished, except so much better, way queerer, and with way less transphobia. Thank you, and later, witches. Hey there, my name's Esme. I'm from Montreal. Um, long time listener, first time caller. Uh, it's been such a pleasure listening to this series. A classmate of mine, one of my good friends in undergrad recommended it, and I'm so glad that they did. What a great series this has been. Can't wait to see what you guys do next. Um, I teach high school, and so getting to listen to um, each of your episodes, looking at a different analytic lens, uh, it's a great sort of academic refresher for me. And it's been so generative, you know, talking to my sister, talking to um, my fellow um, um, fans who are problematizing this series. So many great conversations have sprung out of this podcast, out of my listening. Um, and this time I've spent um, parasocially with you both. Thanks so much, Hannah and uh, Marcel. You guys rock. And Coach too. Take care. Hi, I'm Danica from Perth, Western Australia. I came for Harry Potter and stayed for the brilliant scholarship and feminism. Thank you so much for your insights and laughs over the years. I can't wait for your new series. Please keep making podcasts for eternity, okay? P.S. My surname is Potter and I'm loving this new era of not being asked if I'm related every day. Yes, it's funny every time. Hey, witches. It's Lydia Nicole here from the UK. I spoke to you last year about haunting and Harry Potter and it was so much fun. 
I just wanted to say um, what a salve for the heart it's been over the last eight series, listening to you guys navigate these troubled waters, um, the troubled waters that is being a Harry Potter fan in 2023. I'm loving what you're doing with Material Girls so far. Please keep up the hot takes. Thank you to all of the production team um, over at Witch Please Productions. I'm so excited to see how you guys grow and develop over the next few years. Um, Keep up the great work. Love you guys. Bye. Hi, Crystal in Western Australia. And I just wanted to thank the whole team for making academic research so accessible and broadening my horizons and giving me such a wonderful community that Witch Please has. It's really great to be a part of it. And I really appreciate you guys and really look forward to Material Girls. Hi, this is Lotta from Germany. I wanted to say thank you to everyone on the team for making this show that made me laugh and think and also cry sometimes. (laughs) And I wanted to let you know that I think the critical analysis that you do is, it's just really fun to me. But more importantly, it makes me feel hopeful that we're not powerless as long as we pay attention. So yeah, can't wait to witness your next adventures and sending much love. Bye. Hi, my name is Lisa. I am calling in from Pennsylvania. And um, I started binge listening to Witch Please in the spring of 2018 when I was trying to figure out what the hell was going on in America with uh, the orange racist as a presidential candidate. Um, and then, although it was still shocking to me when he won the election, I wasn't as surprised as I probably would have been if I hadn't been listening and thinking more deeply um, with your assistance about the patriarchy, capitalism, racism, systems of power, etc., cetera, et cetera, all the bad shit. So thank you so much. Um, I've been a big fan since then. I You make me laugh every time I listen to the pod. And I'm really proud to be a Patreon supporter. Hi, this is Maggie from St. Paul, Minnesota. To me, which please has meant creating a bigger world for me to live in. Um, I was radicalized by this podcast. I'm very proud of that. And I hope you're proud of that. But I think that um, together, your whole team has expanded my worldview so much by teaching me to demand more um, for the people that I love, from the people that I love. And um, to just create a world that seeks justice and holds people accountable and believes we can be better. Um, All of that, I think, came to me first from you guys in this podcast. Hello, witch, please. I'm Nicoletta, she, they pronouns. And I want to thank you for enriching my life in more ways than I can rattle off in 45 seconds. But you've given me tools to think critically and engage critically with media and texts and everyday interactions that I have. Um, and you've also connected me with Taya, who was on your episode about disability and resistance. I reached out to her and she's now one of my closest friends and I love her dearly. And I am forever indebted to your podcast for connecting us. And I cannot wait for the future of Witch Beast Productions and wish you all the best. Hey, witches. Brenda P. here from Minnesota. The thing that I most love about Witch Please is the people. From the amazing hosts to the people working on the show behind the scenes, to the listeners and patrons, this has been and will continue to be a community of the raddest people around. One of my favorite things we did as a community was way back when we did the Triwizard Tournament. It was so much fun trying things and cheering each other on and having that interaction. I am so happy that the best thing will still be with us as Witch Please Productions moves forward to new things, and I'm excited to explore new topics together. Hi, this is Caroline, um, voice noting you from Scotland, Edinburgh, and I love Witch Please so much, and I just wanted to say this is a podcast that got me into podcasts, so thank you so much for that. And as someone who's really interested in literature and critical theory, but who never studied that at university, like this podcast has been such an amazing learning experience for me. And I feel like I've learned so much Um, and that makes me feel really empowered. And 
it's just been like the podcast that I listen to in all of the hard times in my life just re-listen to it so thank you guys so much and I'm really gonna miss it hello my name is Emily I use she and they pronouns I live in London but like which please I come from Edmonton um I just wanted to say that I haven't quite been listening to the, since the beginning started listening about 2016 and went back to the beginning and started again um, I've loved following the evolution of the podcast. I've loved seeing the way that uh, Marcel and Hannah have changed and that the team has grown and that so many people have become involved. I love the guests. I've learned so much about academic fields I didn't even know existed, about concepts I didn't know existed, and which places just made me a better person. Hi, this is Emily in Atlanta. Congratulations to everyone on the Witch Please team for a truly extraordinary reboot run. Thank you for making us laugh, think, and question. And thank you for giving me a space to process my messy breakup with all things Harry Potter. I'm still finding his stuff around my house. The end of something I love so much is bittersweet, but I'm so excited for what comes next. All the best. This is Leah from Alabama. I started listening late in the run of Witch Please when I was pregnant and being pregnant in the southern US was a real bummer for all of the reasons you can imagine. Witch Please gave me a lot of hope for humanity and served as a wonderful escape. So thanks so much for introducing me to new ways of looking at literature and some devastating fun facts that weren't very much fun at all. I hope my little person grows up to be as cool as the Witch Please team and I can't wait to see what this fantastic group of folks does next. Hello Witch Please, this is Rose in Froome in the UK. I've been a listener since 2016 when I was going through quite a hard time and Witch Please became my go-to comfort listen. Since then, your voices have soundtracked several house moves, two babies and me starting a master's degree. And every time I listen to episodes old or new, I feel comforted but also angry and motivated to learn more and do better. So also thank you for helping me kind of understand Foucault. That's been a big help in my degree. Thank you. I can't wait to hear what comes next. Hey, witches. This is Paula Oscar from Germany. Which Please was the first podcast I ever listened to. You reminded me how much I love analyzing texts and introduced me to the wonderlands of critical theory and cool queer and or nerdy podcasts. You brought me joy when I was depressed or alone and inspired great conversations with my friends. You helped me grow into a more radical human being. I'm super excited for your new projects and thank you with all my heart for being the kind, fun, smart, hot-eyed owls you are. Hoot hoot. Hi, this is Alex from Cambridge in England. I just wanted to say a massive, massive thank you to Hannah and Marcel for not only bringing me such endless joy through rough periods of life um, since the original run, but also for helping me completely renegotiate my relationship with Harry Potter, my relationship with media in general, and my relationship with theory that I hadn't really thought about since my undergrad many, many moons ago. I feel like I understand it much better now. Thank you. Hi, Hannah, Marcel, coach, and the entire team. This is Meredith from Waterloo, Ontario. I was a huge fan of the first run of the podcast, and the second run of the podcast arrived during the pandemic, right around the birth of my first child, which please was in my ears during late night feedings, long walks to keep the baby asleep, and honestly, a comfort during the spiral of postpartum anxiety. I'm so grateful for this podcast. It's made me a better feminist, a better ally, a better teacher, and a better person. So grateful for the friendship you modeled for us, as well as the joy. With so much gratitude for the last time. Later, witches. Thank you, witches, for joining us for the last episode of Witch Please. It has been a hoot. As always, special thanks to everyone on the Witch Please Productions team, including our digital projects coordinator, 
Gabby Iori. Do you want to make your sound yourself? Boing! <laughs> <laughs> Our social media manager and marketing designer, Zoe Mix. Our sound engineer, Eric Magnus. And our executive producer, Hannah Rehack, aka Coach. Do you want to make your sound yourself, Coach? I'm going to try, but my voice is gone and I don't know how to whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Additional thanks to Not Sorry Productions, who helped us launch this reboot in 2020, and in particular to Ariana Nettleman, Vanessa Zoltan, Ariana Martinez, and Erica Huang. Witch Please is, this is going to just blow your mind, a Witch Please production. What? And is distributed by Acast. You can find the rest of our episodes and very soon the rest of our podcasts on Acast or at ohwitchplease.ca. Here are some other things you can do at ohwitchplease.ca. Sign up for our incredible monthly newsletter. It's going to go downhill now that we fired Gabby, but... You know, well, probably, you know, we've, probably, got a, we've got a template. We yeah, can do it. yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we'll get Chad GPT to write it for us. <laughs> <laughs> you can access our transcripts, check out our merch, find reading lists for our episodes, and more. You can continue to find us at ohwitchplease on Instagram or Twitter, and on Patreon at patreon.com slash ohwitchplease. And now, for the last time, we're going to shout out the people who have given us five-star reviews on Apple Podcasts and who have, therefore, killed Marcel softly with their song. Thanks to Off the Cali, Neb Fab, Cran Kras, Lula Doom, Amelia Biblio, and Chandler Swift. We'll be back in your ears soon with the pilot episode of Material Girls. But until then, later, witches! Really cute, really great. Yeah. Of course, you're included. <laughs> always, Aww, that's always. so cute. Always. Because we did give you two weeks notice. Yeah. Right, I was tired. <laughs> I was yeah. like, so, so tired. Yeah. So just yeah. checking, kind of checking. Yeah, you can yeah. stop recording. Yay! Really delete. Oh my god. Right? Delete. I push delete. Please. Please.